I got a real treat for you today. Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno. We are here for the grand opening for the Warner Brothers Studio Tour, where we see the real magic in the making of Harry Potter. You're a great wizard, Harry. Very almost. Ten years and eight feature films. The most successful film series of all time. This is very exciting. Um, just seeing everyone still so excited over after all these years. And then they haven't got bored of it yet, they still want more, so it's, it's fun. Is it, is it a great opportunity for you to come back and, and reminisce? And it is, I mean, it was quite moving. I've been here for about three days now and um, walking around and just, I mean, ev everywhere you look, I get a flashback of um, when we were a kid. And it's, it's really great that we can share that with everyone else and I hope people kind of get that same feeling. How are you feeling about being back today? Very good, it's lovely. They saved the red carpet, they rolled it all up from Leicester Square and they've just put it back here. It's recycling. Exactly. And what we're doing here is recycling sets. Oh yeah, normally sets get dumped in the skip, you know, or burnt or thrown away. And um, it was felt very early on that these sets, Stuart sets, Stuart Craig's designs, were um, particularly special. And obviously Harry Potter is such a loved phenomena that um, it was talked very early on about creating a special space for them. And I am so thrilled that that's happened. Um, I went around and had a quick look on Thursday and I had this amazing sense of pride um, for the work that we've all done bringing these movies to the screen. And you can see the detail, the painters, the plasterers, the model makers, you know, the costumers, every th everybody who's contributed to this world has done a really special job and there's a lot of love gone into all of these creations and we're thrilled that people can share them. Is it nice to be back? It's love. It's always nice to be back, you know, and it's weird. I drove past the other day and went, what have they done? <laughs> I used to live here virtually. <laughs> it's like somebody's knocked your old house down and built a new estate or something. It's a bit strange. <laughs> have you seen it yet? I haven't been in, no. No, not at all. So it's, um, yeah, it'll be exciting to, exciting to see it all. Is it, was it nice for you as an actor, because it's all around the sets and the attention to detail and the craftsmanship yeah. of the sets, will it be nice for you to go back and, and kind of really inwardly digest, because probably you were turning up on set and playing your parts? Well, yeah, I mean, but the thing, the thing, the thing with filmmaking is there is a lot of time where, where you're kind of downtime, I guess, between shots and working out what's happening next and things. And it used to, I think they did, to be honest, I think the props men did it for us to keep us interested and keep us busy while we weren't working. All the little details are just incredible. Welcome to Hogwarts. For the first time ever, to go behind the scenes at the studio where it all began. It's home to us. You know, we worked there for 10 years and it was lovely seeing those amazing sets every day. I'm really thrilled and especially for uh, the folks behind the camera because actually it, you, uh, the work they do is the most detailed, the, the fan most fantastic quality you could ever wish to, to find. And you don't always see it on camera it's all there it builds up the kind of it's part of building the atmosphere um, but you're looking at the cast you're following the story and so you're not looking at you know Dumbledore's costume or uh, the, the the molding on the great hall door or uh, things like that and there is there's some fantastic workmanship in every area of these films actually we were lucky enough to be able to employ the best to do the best uh, and I'm really pleased for them that because it's not normal normally this everything gets destroyed but uh, because you don't you, you don't have these two huge stages to keep it in What's it like for you as an actor to be a part of, of these these stories? Well, it's great to think that you're going to, you know, go down in posterity and grow old and go to your grave and you might be remembered for something, I suppose. You, you, this, uh, you know, I never expected when I did the first one of these it to become such an incredible phenomenon. And, you know, we finished quite a long time ago now, so it's a bit ridiculous we're still here doing talking to people with purple and yellow scarves on. I know. We bought them because we're so cold. Seriously. And is there a camaraderie on, on these kind of films because they've, they span so many years? Yeah, more, more so than anything I've, I've ever done. Uh, we, all, we all got on very well. I mean, we really did. And there was a lot of fun. Some very funny people. And I really, I mean, I really loved many of the people on this. And, uh, you know, I really miss those cold nights with a cup of tomato soup and giggling and you know it was very good fun. And, uh, I just wanted to ask really about the relationship that you ask you have with the actors. Um, oh yes well that's very important because you cannot do a design that nobody wants to wear so I think that in the first time you have to know the actor you have to learn to know them try to find out why they have been cast and what was the special 
little thing that the director or big thing that the director was finding in them to cast them and when you have that establish a relationship with them in order of doing the best you can to create with them the character that they will play. And, and did you find as well with the, the, the lead cast as they've grown older that their clothing had... They grew, they grew, you know, so they came from the, the start of a child to whom you said you wear that because it's good to the teenager who said, and why should I wear that? And then you have a grown-up saying, well, you're right, because it's my character to wear that. So we had all evolution, you know, I really felt like a mom because I saw them from 12 till 18, you know, from um, a little, a little shy into a, I mean, um, for Hermione, for instance, who was a, a wonderful, beautiful little girl and became that amazing woman. I mean, I think that was quite interesting. Wow! To step into the actual sets. It's tiny little details that you probably don't notice when you watch the film, but when you actually walk down it, you can see the work that's gone into it, and it's, it's, it's amazing. Back home? Back home, after many years, it seems, yeah. Uh, no, back home, which is exciting. Mm. Have you been in there and seen the sets yet? I haven't seen anything, so I have no idea what what tricks they've got up their sleeve. Or um, so I'm very excited about seeing it. What's, what's been the most sort of memorable um, side of working on these films? Um, I guess, I guess, no, like all of it. I guess it's, it's such a kind of whirlwind when you're making it, and such a. Uh, such a good thing and such an exciting thing and, and um, I guess the first film felt very special because we didn't, we didn't necessarily know what it would become you know we just thought it'd be you know one two films maybe and so the naivety felt quite lovely. You've got to act against some great actors What's, how have you grown as an artist? Well, yeah I mean it's been great because um, the Dursleys have it's mainly me Fiona Richard and Dan so it's been great because I've gone on to do um, a theatre job with Fiona, and um, and so that's been so that kind of career relationship is kind of still burning, which is exciting and great. And she's a very important woman and, and figure and, and mentor and um, all the rest to me. You were for here from the beginning of the Harry Potter film. I was, yeah, ten years, ten years, man and boy. <laughs> exactly. Is that quite a commitment for you as an actor when you sign up to to doing these films? Well, it's a commitment you're more than happy to be committed to. Because it's um, it, w w one had no idea at the start that it was going to be ten years. You know, you thought, well, we'll do one film, and if it hadn't gone very well, that would have been it. That would have been <coughs> that would have been one year of my life. But that's the way it turned out, and and I'm glad it did because it's. Um, I don't think of it as a commitment. I think of it as a, an opportunity to be in something as great as this, just working with the best of British, really, you know. And, and also that you, you worked with um, a, a, a variant of directors. Yeah. What, what was that like? Did that give a, a freshness to, to, what, to, to the, the story? I think it did. I think the directors that directed them as they went along, they were the right director for that particular episode, you know, whether it was uh, Chris, Alfonso, Mike Newell or David Yates, you know. They, were all, they all brought something unique to it, whereas, and, but they still kept a kind of continuity of the story and kept the richness of it because the characters developed and changed as you know especially the children and and I thought they were all absolutely brilliant in, in making sure they're getting the best out of those young people who developed from 10 year olds to 20 year olds and developed personally so much I mean and they stayed human and nice and, 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 and a pleasure and, and a good laugh and they also developed as actors as well, and it was, that was one of the pleasures of watching young people grow up and just, just get better and better at what they do. When you first were presented with the script of A, a Goblet of Fire, uh, what was it that really connected you to it that got you enthusiastic about directing it? Oh, I, was, I was going to introduce the, the ultimate bad guy. I, I was going to make, um, what's his name, Ray Fiennes, um, Voldemort. Um, the man who shall not be named, actually. The man who shall not be named, because I didn't for a one split second remember it. Um, uh, but that was a huge attraction. So you're going to have uh, this great big central character. Um, and also I had lots of uh, new characters to deal with. So I loved all that. And it was a, it's a huge movie. I mean, it's got half a dozen colossal uh, sequences in it that would be enough for you know a single movie anywhere else and I had five or six of them so the scale of it was very exciting 
I, I felt really kind of, I had to be good every day to come up to the, uh, to the movie. See the real costumes. Marvel at the groundbreaking special effects. As we reveal how the magic was created. We talk about Diagon Alley, but today is a trip down memory lane. It is, ma massively. It's, it's pretty epic in there. I've just got to say, you've got to go, and you've got to come. You've got to, if you like everybody, you've got to come. I think what's nice about this film as well, that they have been built on real sets. So, as opposed to yeah, yeah, blue screen. Really no, they actually got um, uh, the, the, the people that actually made all the sets and put them all up, and all the costume and everything, they got them to come back and do it all up. So, what you see is exactly what we worked with, and it's done by the people that we worked with. It, and it must be so beneficial for you as an actor to have something to work against. Yeah, definitely. Like, you know, it's the it's same as when you get great, you know, a costume and, and your makeup done. You know, it's like that's phase one of getting into character. The first one's kind of in your head. Yeah, phase one, phase two, and then there, there it's done. You can, you're framed in the world already. It's perfect. Did you work, enjoy working on the films? I loved working on the films. Yeah, yeah. There was such, it was such a nice, good crew and uh, good people involved in it, and you know, such fun people. I think what what stands out as well is that you know we've got a completely British cast. Is, was it important for yourselves as as actors to have that cam camaraderie and, and keep it British? Um, no, I mean, I don't know. It was important for me to keep it British. I think that it is, it is uh, important to the writer. I think that's why it's happened that way, and I think that a lot of the, um, uh, you know, I, I do remember talking to somebody when we were over in LA, and they said, yeah, it's fascinating, you know, all that old bit at the station, you know, go, that's our station in London, that's not a set, that's what London's like. And afterwards, you're going to the Middle Temple to have the, you know, the, the rap party or whatever, you're looking around going, well, there's no set design at all, I mean, it's just London, isn't it? These extraordinary little, you know, dry gone alleys and, you know, old boarding schools and castles that nobody lives in in Scotland. I mean, you're just like, we've got it here. When you've worked on such a series of films and then it comes to an end, is there, is there a loss? Um, yeah, yeah, of course there is. I really miss her because she kind of gave a lot to me. Um, she, always, she was a very calming influence on me. Um, but I kind of I can always go back and read the books and, and now the studio is always going to be here. Yeah. What does, what does it mean to you having the studio uh, the, now the studio tour? Um, it, it's like our home is always going to be there and it's, it's nice that fans can finally can, can see it and, and feel the feelings we had, you know, they um, yeah, I, I'm just glad that it's not packed away in a box and somewhere where it's forgotten about. I'm glad it's out here and to be appreciated. I hope they add more as well. This is incredible. This has been a long time coming and I'm very excited. Get ready to visit the UK's newest attraction. I to know obviously your perspective as a filmmaker because as the film starts, when they started they were very light, not fluffy, but it became darker and darker and darker as did the cinematography and I just wondered um, to hear well, your opinion. We, we actually, that's a very, very clever question. We, when we shot the last, uh, especially part one, it was darker. There was a, there were some scenes that we dropped. There was a fantastic, quite horrible scene with me and me and Helena, uh, and there was a there was a that the scene with with me and Emma in the woods got really dark. And they cut they they cut the the, the, the really bad bits out of that. But but they were in there right up until the very end because because I think the producers wanted to, the film to be to be scary and dark and real, and then realised well, hang on, it is still there are still kids coming to this, and there are still children that are finding the books and although the kids that start read the book when they were 12 or 18 now you know may or 20 you know maybe maybe there are kids that are still 12 and want to see the film so so it's a very thin line you had to allude to it rather than actually be full on frightening so we had the air of it being a scary film but there was a lot of scarier stuff that went you know it's a real yes it's a real testament the quality of british talent and in all departments and also what's wonderful is it's a blend of really old-fashioned you know, fashion techniques, the plastering, the sculpting, the painting, and then the really modern you know, visual effects and also how those visual effects have developed and how now Britain can compete with the very best visual effects in the world. Warner Brothers Studio Tour London, the making of Harry Potter. Well, many thanks to the cast and crew that have come to christen this very special studio tour. I'm Claire Bueno and you're watching Premier Scene. Expecto Patronus! Wicked.